Dominating our news in the very sky above our community, a massive petrochemical fire belching enormous plumes of black smoke into the atmosphere above Deer Park. The conflagration continued largely unabated for three full days, reigniting briefly twice more as fire crews struggled to completely contain a very volatile threat. Health monitors claim the tons of contaminants released by the ITC blaze never rendered the air unsafe to breathe. You know, the mayor and other officials have said there's no problem, there's no harm done, but I don't know that I necessarily believe that's true. It looks very dramatic, and when you read about the chemicals that are being burned and that are being aerosolized and put into the atmosphere, I can't help but think that there's some kind of toxic damage that's happening. I don't feel like we're being told the truth. I don't trust. Whether you believe that or not, the entire incident and the inherent risk it represents demand both a reality check and a reckoning. Transforming fossil fuels into useful products has been at the core of the Houston area economy for the better part of a century and will continue. What remains unclear and unresolved is the level of preemptive regulation our society should demand. And with that, uh, Tony, I'm going to start with you. What's your read on this Deer Park f fire and the danger it poses? Well, I think folks are going to be arguing about the power of the economic engine that is the petrochemical machinery. If folks want to argue that, what I want to add is, we're talking about Houston being unattractive to people around the country now. You've got natural disasters. Of course, some folks are going to say that Harvey was not a natural disaster. It was man-made because of climate change. Now you've got this plume of smoke that made international news. I don't care where you lived in Houston. That day when you came out, you saw that over our heads. Can you imagine what it was like living right under it? So, so one, if you just want to talk business, this is bad for Houston's image across the globe, for one. And secondly, let's bring it back to the community. Today, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Talento Building with Houston, there'll be a town hall. Mm -hmm. It's by our streets, our community, LULAC, Sierra Club. Brian Paras was telling me that there'll be members from every level of government. People need to go because this is what I heard, that corporation officials are trying to get community members to sign claims to waive their rights to lawsuits. That sounds unfair to me. Now, there's a fair way to get people examined and have the corporation speak, but it should be people first. Okay, <clears throat> hundreds of billions, not billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in investment, uh, clearly critical to our national security. Look, this is what we do here. Uh, Justin Leary, no, it's no accident you're here. You're a member of the uh, American Petroleum Institute. Mm -hmm. What's your read on what's going on? Did we have enough regulation? Does more need to happen? Regulation isn't necessarily the biggest driving force to make companies abide by the rules, follow the rules, and do the right thing. We're going to see a whole bunch of civil litigation in the next coming weeks and months, um, regardless about what may or may not have happened with the corporation trying to get people to sign away the rights. But on this past Friday, the AG, Ken Paxson, already filed a civil lawsuit. Small amount of money. It's only about $100,000. But the big money will be all of the business continuity insurance claims by the big large corporations, as we just heard, the ship channel is still closed. This is millions and millions of dollars that ITC will be held liable for. That is a huge, huge uh, motivation to do the right thing. Okay, ITC, serial offender, uh, lots of fines, relatively small, cost of doing business. As you watch this go down, Nianza, what was your read? My read was that the people that live around there, the, ne the very next day after this happened, I was in a hearing, and the, one of the administrators who lives in the neighborhood that was affected, you know, they were told that they shouldn't breathe the air, and she had all these issues. She had to go to the emergency room. So my concern is about the citizens that live around the area that it happened in and their children, and let's just say you already had an allergy or something that was aggravated. But at the same time, you know, maybe the fines need to increase, but an accident, I don't know if it was an accident or if it was negligence, but we need to be very aware that, you know, there's a cost-benefit analysis to doing business. 
And if this is what the biz is this if this is the business that we're in in Houston, then this is something that could likely happen. You know, maybe there needs to be a little bit more regulations. So I may disagree with you a bit. So regulations do matter, and the fine amount does matter as well. But with the corporations that are losing money because the ship channel closed, that all matters. And I think that ITC, you know, they're going to have to write a big check, and they're going to have to do some soul searching and make some changes. Okay, Jessica. This sector is critical to our national security. We're talking about one out of every three gallons of gasoline refined right here, not to mention jet fuel and all the other mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, as we, you know, debrief on this and, and look at what should happen, what's your read? Well, this is what makes Texas one of the largest economies in the world. And, you know, our ship channel, we talk about it all the time, the industry that's around, uh, it lines the ship channel that keeps Texas economic engine going. But that doesn't mean that repeat offenders and whatnot don't need to be punished. I really want to give props. You know, we saw really the veracity of our elected officials this week. Um, in the, her debut, uh, Lena Hidalgo left a lot to be desired. She has a long way to go before public trust uh, is up to par, up to standard, as, as seeking her out as someone to feel comfortable in in this type of emergency. Contrasting to that, however, State <coughs> Representative Briscoe Kane from the Deer Park area was right on top of this the entire time, posting updates in real time with his constituents on Facebook and throughout his <coughs> office. And this isn't the first time that Briscoe Kane has kept his constituents up to date in real time. He was consistent during Hurricane Harvey also. And that is the example of a real leader during this time, someone the constituents can go to to get real answers and, and the best information possible. And he will seek out the information for his constituents. And I really give him props for what he did during this emergency. Kira Murray, Harris County is now uh, a Democratic stronghold. Uh, and, and we had uh, Adrian Garcia who ran it uh, for Congress and for County Commissioner on environmental issues. As you watch this unfold, what was uh, going through your head? Well, I mean, as a native Houstonian, I recognize the relationship between the petrochemical industry and this community. It is a vital economic part of our existence here and probably will continue to be for many years. But I think the question becomes, what kind of neighbors do we expect our corporate partners to be? And in the case of this ITC incident, it seems clear that they've sort of violated that trust. And it sounds like it's not the first time that's happened. And I think, you know, we all want to make money in this community. We want businesses to thrive, but we want the businesses who are here to be good corporate citizens, good partners with the community. And that trust has been violated in this situation, seems clear. Bob Price, uh, you heard Keir, uh, and there have been billions in profits pulled out of our, our, our petrochemical sector. Uh, is it time to take a hard look? Well, it is time to take a hard, hard look at it, but I take exception to, the, to what, what you said there. We don't know the cause of the accident or what caused this fire. We don't know if there was negligence. We don't know if there was violation of any rules or regulations. So let's not rush to judgment <coughs> on claiming someone's a bad neighbor in a community when they clearly contribute millions of dollars in taxes, millions of dollars in employment and, and jobs for people, high paying jobs by the way. So let's, let's watch that. However, having said that, regulations do serve a purpose and when you violate those regulations, mm -hmm. there should be a penalty and that penalty shouldn't just be a cost of doing business, it should be something that makes you pretty uncomfortable and if you're repeating those violations, then it should escalate to the point that it could even become a criminal offense.